Welcome back to P2 Aero and the Yamaha 998 Turbo Powered Rans S21 build. Now that we got our avionics all squared away in the last video, it's time to finish up the cooling system, well at least to the point of being able to ground run this thing. Today on the TV we have some experimental aircraft channel keeping us company. And if you hadn't seen his stuff, well you're living under a rock. He's one of the staple aviation content creators out there, so pause this and just go watch his stuff. It seems like I preface every video with a kids don't try this at home warning. So here we go again. I've never made up AN lines before, and I'm pretty sure there's better, more conventional ways to do it. But I don't want to invest in all those tools to do it the right way, mainly because I plan to have all these lines made up by aircraft specialty once I know what everything is going to look like in the end. Unfortunately for me, that means that I need to get something functional in place prior to knowing what works and what doesn't. So what you see here is the cheapest PTFE AN line kit that I could find on the interwebs. While you witness me struggling my way through assembling these lines, I'll touch a bit on the different AN options you have out there. At the cheaper, more common end of the spectrum, you have what they call push lock version. That uses a more standard rubber hose, and as the name implies, the hose slides over the barb and is simply a friction fit on the end of the fitting. I'm sure there's plenty of aircraft out there flying with these, and they're probably okay if done correctly and the appropriate environmental considerations are made. Next up is the regular steel braided rubber version that has fittings similar to the ones I'm using. The lines are a bit more flexible, but they can't take as much heat and they're more susceptible to chemicals like different fuel variants and such. Lastly and most costly is the PTFE lined steel braided version that I'm using. While stiffer and more difficult to work with, it can take more heat and it's more widely accepting to different chemicals, giving me the most peace of mind for my installation. In the end, when I get all these made by aircraft specialty, they'll all be PTFE as well as having an additional integrated fire sleeve for added protection. For those out there intending on making their own hoses, just be mindful of what you're buying as fittings from one version are not compatible with the other version. If you have PTFE line, you can't use rubber steel braided fittings or vice versa. Also, like most things, you kind of get what you pay for here, so the cheapest version from China generally is not going to serve you as well as some of the higher-end examples. We're building an airplane here, so in the end, just do your homework and choose wisely. For me, I found two aspects of this process more challenging than the rest. The first one is getting the first part over the braiding without jacking up or unraveling the end. And once it does go, you're greeted with some free acupuncture sessions as the braiding begins to poke through the nut. Secondly, as you'll see here shortly, you almost need a third hand to get it all done. I may do with a vice, but if you're doing more than a few of these, it may be worthwhile investing in some kind of vice jaws that are made to hold things for you. Oh, the sounds of small town Texas in the fall. Sirens on a Friday can only mean one thing. The football boys are on their way out of town to play a game. You just don't get that kind of stuff stuck in a big city, and I wouldn't change it for the world.
We just about have all the cooling system wrapped up, but this last little line is pretty far in there. If you remember, we removed this oiled water heat exchanger, so now I need to get that hose connected directly to the lower turbo coolant port. A simple barb fitting here with some clamps will fix this one right up. I don't intend to run regular worm gear clamps on any of these in the end, but I don't want to spend all the money to get nicer clamps until I know exactly what this system is going to look like. I don't want to buy stuff that I don't use in the final version. These will serve me just fine during ground run testing. I'm tying this hose up temporarily as I have some more work to do in this area coming up real soon so stay tuned for that. I'll come up with a good way to secure it when everything else is in place. I'm pretty pumped with the progress and this pretty much makes for a complete coolant system that I can start the engine with. Next I'll be moving into oil and fuel systems so make sure you're subbed to the channel to stay up to date on the progress. As always, I do appreciate you watching and I look forward to hearing what you think in the comments below. See you on the next one.